Thank you for joining us for another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. I am Amira Smith, and I'm here with my awesome co-host, Joshua, Joshua Meekins. You tried, you tried to be my twin just now. I you did. 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 You said it at the same time. Mm. Today, we have a very great guest. We are introducing, and you know, Josh knows her from way, 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 way back way in the back. day. Yes, but we're going to introduce her right now. Her name is, some of you may know her as Fit Brit. This is Brittany Fortson. Brittany making a podcast <laughs> debut. Yeah, Crazy. my first ever podcast debut. And we love it's to see it. It's very special to me. Oh, <laughs> awesome. We can do that for her. Look at that. Now, now, I can say this. Like, you've known Brittany a long time. Yeah. But Josh knows some pretty incredible people, so I know already. Like, <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. No, I know you're the real, like, you're a big deal. Because Josh, he just, I don't know how you do it. You're just very know. well connected, bro. Like. Yeah. You know, I'm a little older, so I don't know everybody. You know what I mean? I'm aging out of the game. I'm still almost, in the mix. I'm still in the mix. But you in the mix. mix. So, bit, yeah, what, to tell us about Brittany from what you know, and yeah. then we can go into like how you define yourself. So, Brittany, from what I know, is actually my personal trainer. So, um, Body by Brit is how we're going to put it. So, she makes sure that, um, you know, I, I stay in fighting trim all the time. So, I like taking my Instagram from her. Um, but Brittany has always been really ambitious and hardworking within, you know, her field of fitness. And, um, I won't, you know, delve into it too much more because I want y'all to get to know her. Like I know her. So, um, Britt, how would you describe what you do? Um, so I would say it's funny. Me and somebody that I work with, we were saying, we don't call ourselves personal trainers. We say lifestyle trainers. Like I tell my clients what I do. It's not temporary fix it's not a seasonal fix like if you're going to do this we're going to do this mm-hmm. we're going to change how you feel the diet the body so i say that i'm a lifestyle trainer because if you're committed with me then you know you're changing yourself for the better you're not changing mm-hmm. yourself just for the bikini season you're not changing yourself just to go flex on the next dude to get your girl back <laughs> like, <laughs> we're doing this to to, to really do this how long have you been training Josh? Josh came to me August. I would say yeah. Oh, yeah, my sure. gym opened yeah. up in July. Um, New Jersey gym got to open up for like one-on-one personal training after the pandemic in July. Mm. And Josh came in August. Wow. And at first I was thinking like, oh, yeah, like, okay. <laughs> so at first it was just like, you know what? I'm going to feel it out. We're going to do a month. I'm like, all right, Josh, you're leaving me. He's like, where I'm going? <laughs> Two months ago, by like, all right, Josh, you're leaving me. Where I'm going? And he's still here. So <laughs> to this day, two and that's times crazy. a week. That's that's pretty good because I always thought Josh was an athlete because our mutual connection, Mike J Films, Tony yeah. Chenault, shout out Tony. Shout out okay. Tony all the time. Um, so Tony was an athlete. Yeah. So I assumed. And because I saw Josh's Instagram. And Josh be flexing. Like, he gonna be humble with his time. private Instagram. <laughs> but Josh be on, you know, flex mode. I said, people, like, honestly, it's like, look, like, who's your podcast partner? They look, and girls be like, oh, oh, oh. So I know Josh is very fit as it was. So if he's like, look, this is my trainer and she's the business, that means you really business. Try. I throw a little craziness at him, you know. All the time. There, craziness all the time. He can handle it, though. Like, he can come in. I'd be like, all right, give me 50 burpees. So listen, you said it's about lifestyle. It's yes. not just like a temporary fix. What do you think sets yourself apart from other trainers? Because I, you know, I've had a couple of training sessions or I started seeing a couple of trainers and you're right. Like they're not, do you put people on regimens for mm-hmm. diet or? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, a lot of my clients do want that. So I do offer it. Um, I think what sets me outside and People that come to me will say, because number one, um, I work at, a, my gym is a black owned gym. Um, so, and we're the only one in our area, like black owned, we're known, we're a personal training facility. We're not just a gym, a commercial yeah. gym. So a lot of people will come to us and they'll say like, well, yeah, you know, I had a personal training before, but they'll kind of say like, okay, go do your set of 10, walk away, come back, you done? All right, go do your set of 10 over here, it's walk like away. That come back it's not like that. and they're like you know I'm not gonna lie they're like okay i mean you a little a little pricey but they're i'm gonna give you that cater one-on-one and for me i had to learn as a trainer because of the gym that i'm actually at i was a client with one oh, of the trainers there first really yes so i went there back in 
2017, 2018, I started working with one of the trainers that are there. And I, I loved it and I wanted to keep doing it. I love to see the transformation in myself and I was feeling good about myself. And it was brought to me like, well, why don't you, why don't you go for it? Like, why not? Look at it. Wait, so were you an athlete growing up? Oh, or? no. no, no. <laughs> really? I mean, I did the I whole, mean, like, like, oh. I did the whole, like, running track thing <laughs> that you do in high school, you know, to kind of have an after school wow. activity for social. Yeah. yeah. But, no. I danced when I was younger, um, up until about, like, freshman year. But then after that, it was, oh, yeah, let me run track because I'm not ready to go home. Yeah. I still want to, like socialize with my friends yeah and have a reason mm-hmm. to be other places so what sparked the um i guess the interest within fitness at that point uh, after i graduated high school um my best friend a male best friend Tyreek, he would drag he would have to drag me to the gym to a planet fitness we going to work out. Why? Why? <laughs> why? Why are we doing this? And if he wouldn't let me just hop on a treadmill or just get on a stair master, it was no, we're going to lift weights. Mm. And it's like, but what do I need? To, it, what do I need to do this for? Yeah. I'm petite. Why do I want to do this? And after a while, it became like, you up? Are we going to the gym today? What are we, what are we doing today? And then from there, I found out about um, the gym I'm at, Nonstop Fitness and Lawrence. I found out about them. And I went into personal training to kind of have more of that one-on-one mm-hmm. interaction. And when I started seeing results, I'm like, oh, okay, we <laughs> put a little shape on this body, you know. We... And I was like, I would love to do this for other people. Like, my mm-hmm. trainer, he hyping me up. We taking the progress pictures. And I was feeling good. And there was, there was nothing in my area where I'm at where I felt like that. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a community there. Um, it's not just that you're just with your trainer, you're one and done. There may be a couple people with you during your session as well. So you have other people uplifting you. You have other people, yes. you know, cheering you on. And it's, it's black owned. I, I can listen to, to ratchet music while I'm working out yeah. and not have to worry about like turning it down or not have to worry about slamming my weights and mm, okay. so, y'all, so y'all can get your grunt on. Oh, oh absolutely. Because yeah. I know like there's other gyms that say something like no the no grunt zone and yeah. all that. And I'm like, well how are people getting they really pushing it up? Like that is a big release to do it. So I, I way back, you know, when I tried to do a little fit. I need to because I'm about to turn that corner and I'm always like, I gotta start working out again. Like, because genetics can only take you so far. Genetics can make you look good in your clothes, but when it's bikini season Everything. You the, truth. the truth yeah. is revealed. Yeah. You on the beach, like, wait, but I thought, wait. <laughs> I know black don't crack, but what's, what's going on? Like, what's happening? No, really. So, who is your, like, when you look at who you train, your main audience? Or so I'm, I'm assuming because social media is out that you probably have built, like, business around a brand as, like, a, a woman personal trainer. Um, I would say, at first, when I first started training, I was kind of like, you know... I only want to train females. Um, and I only wanted to, I kind of had it in the concept where I was kind of scared to train females who kind of either have my same body type mm. or around my body type. Um, I was more so into like, let's just build you up. Let's, you know, do the muscle thing. I didn't feel confident in myself to do the whole weight loss mm. um, uh, avenue. And there's and a difference, I'm assuming. Yeah, there's a huge difference. Um, and I explain that to a lot of people because they think you're just with a trainer. My, I have people ask me like, well, you're not just going to give me stuff to do. I'm like, everything that I give you is tailored to what your goals are. Mm. Um, somebody who comes to me and says, I want to tone up. I want to put on muscle. I'm not going to give you a cardio regimen four or five times out of the week. Yeah. Now, if I have someone on like, you know, more so like, no, I need to drop weight. I'm looking to drop 15, 20 pounds. Mm. Oh, okay. I mean, yes, you do burn, you know, muscle by lifting weights but I want you to have more full body I want you to have more cardio Mm -hmm. um and that's what I I like to let my clients know that it's a very personal level here and don't just think the 60 minutes that we spend in here together don't talk to me outside of here Mm -hmm. um don't reach out to me don't I tell my I'm an open book you need to talk to me about something let me know you need to hit me up outside of here even if it's not gym related let me know I feel like it's important to have that client um trainer relationship but make it a little deeper that makes sense because it's kind of like you're like a personal guru for them to help them reach their goal right and they'll come to me and they'll say hey what do you think about this 
hey, you know, my last trainer had me on this. What do you think about that? Instead of just like, okay, I know I'm just here for my 60 minutes. Let me do my workout and I have to go home. And it doesn't have to be like that. Yeah. And I will say, like, you do a really good job of developing relationships with your clients. I think that's important, especially how you talked about being, you know, a lifestyle kind of uh, trainer. Like, having to go in and actually be like, okay, now, like, I'm Brittany. I'm now part of your life. <laughs> how are we going yeah, to accomplish this? We were just talking the other day in my gym. I've had clients that come to me. They see me out. They're like, you know, it's okay if you don't, if you can't make the session tomorrow. Like, Enjoy yourself, girl. And then I'm in their DM, too, like... So, you know, you eating this tonight, <laughs> we, we going to work this off the next couple of days. I'm going to let you enjoy your holiday, but just know. Mm-hmm. Like, listen. Yeah. What do you, because um, I know, that, so that's like interesting. Well, so I, that's like, I have two questions right at the top of my head. Yeah. One is about male clients versus female clients. Like, what do you notice their goals being? I'm sure men, but I don't know. Maybe you do have a lot of men who want to lose weight. Is it mostly like men are more interested in weight training and like really embrace it when then women are scared of it? Or what do you see as far as them, what their goals are and what they like when you first give them the regimen, how receptive they are? Well, I'll say my uncle was my first male client um, and he mm-hmm. has health issues out the wazoo, mm-hmm. um, which also helped me educate because you learn like when people have different things like diabetes or gout or any kind of like health or even sometimes mental conditions you have to kind of even take it a step further um so his goal was you know let's do the weight loss um and I kind of started getting into actually weight loss training and feeling more comfortable training even though like he's family I know him we already have that rapport it was still different of a woman who's trying to shape herself out Mm -hmm. a woman who's you know like okay can I can we build my booty like it was a it's a different playing field a guy just like I feel like the guys that I've trained with and I've also worked with, whether it's weight training or it's weight loss, they want to look good for themselves. Females mm. is kind of like, no, I'm trying to be the baddest out in Miami yeah. during the summertime. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. Right now, outside of Josh, I have one other male client. Um, and he was actually the first person, like females bring to me all the time, like, this is who I want to look like. This is my body and so. He had a body info. He's like, yeah. He's <laughs> like right. look at this dude right here. He's like, can we build me up to look like that? I'm like, yeah, we absolutely can. And they caught me off guard because I've never, I never seen that. Was it a celebrity person? No, so, it was just kind of Let me of find like out. A, he brought it like, 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 listen, I don't know who this guy is. No, <laughs> this is Josh. Uh, no, or it was his ex's new guy. He oh. said, make me look better than him. <laughs> I'm he bringing like, this flex on my it was No, It was no blue check, no nothing. It was just a guy on the beach. I'm telling Shut you. Off. I'm telling you. I know he was trying to flex on Wait, the back. Wait, in the back. He's I like, had to be. Can we get me to look like this? Wow. I'm like, yeah, you. We got to turn up to get you to look like that. But yeah. and it, it's funny. He's definitely on his way. To <laughs> okay. Okay. Love the confidence. Yes, we done built the arms up. We built the back up. We working on this next. That's okay. the, that's the next thing for him. Yeah. Wow. What is so, okay. You went from trainee to trainer. Yes. What education did you have to get to be able to say like, I'm a, I'm a personal trainer. Um, so for personal training, you have to, there are different organizations that you can go through to become certified. Yeah. Um, the organization I went through is ACE. It's the American Council on Exercise. And there are a few different programs you can go into, but they tell you up front, like, look, if, at least you need to study for this three to six months you're okay. you, wow. you're not prepared it's like a written test or yeah it's a written test there are 180 questions i think you can you can pass by getting at least like 120 right okay. mm. so first time around i went through it and for me at the time i was still working my full-time job i used to also work for the state of new jersey and i was also in school at the time as well i want to talk master's. about that too later too but go ahead so I went through it and I'm like, wow, this is, this is a lot. This okay. isn't just go get the 10 pounds and hit 15 reps. This is a lot of information, the muscles and muscle memory. And I went and took the test the first time and I failed it by one point. Oh, wow. I was devastated. Like I went in my group chat like, oh my God, I failed. <laughs> this is terrible. I went to the owner of my gym now like, this is crazy. Like, I'm so upset. And everybody was like, no, you're fine. Like, you'll get it next time. Mm. 
luckily they do give you a test voucher, which is great. So if you mm-hmm. don't pass the first time, you do get a test voucher to come back and take it again. Mm-hmm. I took it, that was in March. That I originally took the test in 2019. And then I went back in May of 2019 and passed it. Okay. And came right back in my gym like, hire me. When's it? Is it time to sit down and do my interview? I told y'all <laughs> next time I came through these doors, it would be for an interview. Yeah. So here we are. Like, what do you want to do? Uh, That's dope. So can you talk a little bit about even like being, I guess you can say like a brand ambassador or an entrepreneur in your own right. When you came from doing a full-time job into doing what your passion is, which you now do full time, right? How did you kind of make that transition and what did you do to do that? It was terrifying. Um, I was used to, I have a parent who has at least at this point, like 25 years in with the state of New Jersey. And it's funny, after college, I, you know, I got a state job. I'm thinking, oh, I'm sad. I'm, this is what I'm supposed to do, whether it's for, uh, connected to my degree or not. I got benefits. I got a salary and I got paid holidays off. <laughs> Why would I want to go anywhere else? But my dad would tell me all the time, like, you don't want to get stuck in that. You don't want to be looped up at a desk job 20 years from now. Um, so when I decided, I started doing it part time, still with my full time job and things didn't work out. I wasn't moving in the direction I wanted to move there. And I went to the owner of my gym, who's also my mentor and my trainer as well currently. And I said, look, I'm going to take the leap. I'm going to give it to, I gave myself to December 31st of 2019. I said, if you know, I'm still going to do the job search just to see. But if not, I'm going to commit. Yeah. And nothing pulled. I went to an interview and I remember going to him and saying, they offered me the job. And I remember saying, I'm not taking it. Uh, being behind a desk, is that's not what I want to do. That's not where I want to be. I don't feel good about it. Um, and it was rough because I had to learn how to brand myself. I had to learn how to market myself. Mm. I had to learn how to find a way for people that came in the door to separate myself from other trainers, not just mm. say like, okay, well, I've had a, a client before ask me, well, what makes you a good why do you why do you feel like you're a good fit for me and it makes you sit back like well, wait a second why am i i mean everybody under here is delivering results mm-hmm. but what about me sets me differently like why do i think you should be giving me your money instead of the trainer across the room so what was that like i mean like even to brand yourself so like i feel like a lot of time like entrepreneurs creative in their own aspect or like in any right have to find a way to like they're when you're pushed against the wall you figure it out right so can you talk a little bit about what like branding yourself was like? Like how did you come up with now we have this Fitbit brand, right? How did you kind of make that and what what how did that come about? Um, for me, I pulled what was most interesting for me to work on. Like I can do abs all day mm-hmm. and being in the gym, um, myself and another girl, we've coined the term the ab queens. Mm-hmm. So for me it was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna run with this. Like this is what we're gonna do. And I initially had um, my first logo done and I would go be at my commercial gym still at the time and start just recording videos and me working out, have dragged my best friend to the gym. Like, I need you to, I don't care if you're working out. I need you to come record me though. Just record this video. Let's slap it on here. I got to put myself out here. And it was weird. I didn't know how to add music over a video. I didn't know how to do transitions. I didn't know what lighting looked good against (laughs) what body parts. And it's like sometimes a video would get 50 views, but the next one the next day would get 300 views. And over time, especially, I had to also realize I'm an introvert, so I don't like being around people. I will say that, but I feel you. (laughs) Putting myself out there and talking about myself to people. Like, this is big. For me, it's yeah. like this is I a year ago I would never I would have figured out some way to get out of this. Mm. Um, we challenge our friends here, right? Yeah, we yeah. do. But also, it's a um, it's a testament that how you well you mask it for him to be like, I don't think you're an introvert. You're yeah. like, I know how I feel after social media. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you probably feel drained and just like nervous and everything. Wow, that's it's really interesting. So 
I'm guessing training people is not so bad because it's one on one, or is that even mm-hmm. a little bit tough? It's sometimes a little tough. When we say we do one on one training, but um, Josh, for instance, sometimes I may be training Josh, but I may have two other girls who also need to train at that same time. So my attention's got to be here, but my attention's also got to be on the two other people as well. Yeah. And the one person may be, you know, a chatty patty and they want to talk about their life. And it's like, I want to engage with you as your trainer so you know. But I also got to make sure that all my clients, like if there are more than one at that time, feel like I'm giving my attention to all of them. Definitely. He um. So one thing I want to touch on, like we know, fitness is I think more of the public consciousness now mm-hmm. than ever, right? And maybe it's because of Instagram, and it's more. Before we're just existing on the beach, but now if I have my beach photos, and they don't lie, I'm seeing every bowl, <laughs> I'm seeing everything I ate. You know what uh, I mean? Right. And every every push up I didn't do, I'm seeing it on my body. So I know it's been a raise of consciousness of fitness um, overall. But how do you feel as far as in, I guess, like race, because you know that's a social construct, but like ethnicity as far as in like, I feel like fitness overall, especially for people who are building brands around it, is still a kind of like a white thing overall. Uh, absolutely. I feel it's funny. I used to tell my friends all the time, I want to move to Atlanta. I want to move to Atlanta. That's where I'm going to hit the ground running with my fitness gym. My ultimate goal is I would love to have my own female-only gym. Mm -hmm. You know, women have a lot of anxiety about coming to the gym. Um, But even from social media, it's like I think about the type of females, and not even just females in general, but the people who come to me, what their goals are. What I kind of, my style of training is really not the Atlanta culture. Mm. You have girls down there who, um, and more power to them, no shade to anybody. They've had their bodies done. Yeah. They're under the knife. So at that point, they just, they need to keep up with that. Yeah. They're not more so looking for that whole, that lifestyle change. Mm. They've made the decision to like, this is what's going to get me where I need to get. I'm taking the fast track. And yeah. when you say lifestyle change, we can just break down kind of what that means. Like you're saying lifestyle as far as like workout regimen or like what, what does lifestyle include? Lifestyle to me includes your workout regimen, your dietary regimen, and your mental capacity. Mm. It is a mental thing to commit to anything. So, and I think yeah. especially, I think for a lot of people, what they get caught up on is they think they don't have enough time mm. and they think... I don't want to eat that. I don't want to eat the same thing. Oh, that stuff's boring. I'm not doing that. It's easier to, to go to McDonald's than it is to go to the grocery store and spend 10, 15 minutes in the grocery store. Mm-hmm. I've done it. I'm like, you know what? I'll meal prep tomorrow. I'm going to go to Subway or I'm going to go to Panera yeah. because I'm just, I don't want to do it. And I think time is such an illusion that people think I don't have time for that. You do, though. The time, yeah. the hour, if you check on your phone and you look at your socials and you see yeah. how much you spend on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, yeah. that's 60 minutes, 45 minutes in the gym. Right that there. That is true. That is true. I wonder, because it's like, I'm thinking, I mean, if you did go to Atlanta, I think you, you may. <laughs> no, really, because uh, there's certain women on social media I see where they mm-hmm. did go under the knife, but then they're really trying to maintain the look, right? And then I just know some women with these bodies and they really go hard, hard, hard mm-hmm. in the gym to maintain yeah. it or to firm everything else up or whatever. I guess it is. But I'm wondering, like, um, as far as in for a brand, because, okay, so we have sitting right here um, one of Brit's merchandise, like mm-hmm. one of the pieces of her merchandise. So getting, which I really like because I like everything oh, iridescent, <laughs> like, no, really iridescent holographic is, is my thing. And I see, it's also glass. glass yes. So you're not having all the plastics break down. We're talking about true sustainability here. Um, so I can see you care about quality and you clearly care about lifestyle if you're a trainer saying like, no, I have the glass container. Um, so like they're building brand around it because I think like we're, black people are becoming more fit. Everyone is. But the brand and I think about just like platforms like Instagram, getting brand partnerships, the type of brand partnerships that we see where there'll be sometimes a white creator, like no shade, but there'll be a white creator with less of a following, less certification, someone who's really not trained. And then they'll just be able to could like securities brand partnerships that are like kind of lucrative basically. Yeah. And black content creators have to like work harder. 
Um, what inspired you to get into merch? Like just knowing all of that background, how sometimes it's harder for black people to monetize yeah. in a fitness space, right? Um, it what it wanted me to get into merchandise was I wanted something. I still wanted my brand to be separate and apart from the gym that I worked at. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will always have and show credit and to the gym that I'm at because that's really where I got my start. But because I want to grow and I want to grow outside of the gym that I'm at, I always want to have something that's separate and apart. That's still me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, like we have merch at the gym. We have our everything from waist slimmers, even like, you know, body sets for the workout sets for females. And, you know, I'll wear something and people will think like, oh, that's yours. And I'm like, no, that's not stops. This is mine. Yes. I just still want to keep, I want to have an identity. And that's why also I, even all my clients, I call them, that's my fit brick fam. That mm. is the hashtags that I use. That's the language that I use with them. They're not just my nonstop clients. That is separate and apart for them. I want them to also feel like it's deeper than that yeah. for me. Am I a trainer and nonstop? Absolutely. But I'm still my own self as a lifestyle trainer. I have mm. online and virtual clients who are separate and apart from nonstop. And they're coming to me. From a place of, oh, I found you on Instagram. Oh, I was referred to as a friend. So I want to build that up enough to where it's not just, oh, you work at nonstop or you work at a gym. Like, I'm also here to service you in other ways as an individual. What's going on? It's your boy Joshua Meekins, co-host for Disruptors in the Culture. We appreciate y'all for tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And uh, let's continue to disrupt. So uh, setting yourself apart. From what you see, are there like a whole slew outside of the internet, right? But as people that you see here in the Jersey area, because you're in Jersey, um, I guess Jersey, Philly area, are there a lot of black Jersey. women trainers? No, there are not. Mm-hmm. I feel like even the specifically the Jersey area, I feel like personal training is a white male dominated mm-hmm. field. Even the commercial gyms I visited throughout New Jersey, you walk in a gym, you you don't, number one, you don't see a fitness, a female trainer, and you don't see a black female trainer. Wow. You you don't. Wow, that's crazy. And there's definitely, I'm sorry, but like a a, a difference in training style, I want to say, for sure. Oh, absolutely. Uh, A lot of, also, again, the, and again, like, no shade, the male white trainers I've seen, you know, they're jacked up already on their own and you know you have these people who come to them because they think I mean I'm not gonna say they probably absolutely obviously you have the knowledge to be certified in what you're doing but I think you have to be you have you have to have an open mind as to what a person is trying to do you can't just give a person something to do because that's what's worked for you and I think a lot of trainers sometimes that's where the disconnect comes from with a lot of commercial gyms and bigger gyms it's well, this is what I did. So, you know, do yeah. it. You don't take the time to learn if a person, I always ask my clients, have you ever worked with a personal trainer before? What, what do you do on, in, on your own in the gym? Yeah. I don't think sometimes that, um, that time is taken to learn the person before throwing something at them. Mm-hmm. There may be somebody, you can't even put a weight in their hand to maybe a month later after working with them, but you don't know that because in those bigger gyms, they've already been paid. And they're going to be paid regardless. Wow. So it's no need to kind of build that up. It's no need to build those relations. Why would I do that? My, my check is secured. Yeah. Wow. So that's crazy because I'm guessing, and I, I know that would be intimidating for me, right? Mm-hmm. Going to a gym is I don't really care about a, being a man or a woman, but it's the one thing is, it's like, I believe human beings are human beings, right? Mm-hmm. Like everybody's a person, we're humans, but there are differences in like, who's on top, who's considered top of the food chain, mm-hmm. class, oh, social, economically in this country. And when you are top dog, you don't always consider other people, right? So they may in their mind think that their perception of beauty, their perception of what a body should look like, that would be a little intimidating where I'm mm-hmm. like, hey, I don't want to lose weight. Yeah. Like, I'm smaller. I want to gain weight. And he might be like, well, are you crazy? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, certain trainers, like, you're coming up against 
I don't know, someone's whole background and their perception. Yeah, you have of, to learn the person first and foremost. That's, even when my client, their first session, I tell them this is not even, we'll probably work out for a half hour, but I want to know how you're eating. Mm. Are there any medical conditions I need to know about? Family history, previous injuries, ailments, sport, like I need to know you before we, before I just throw you in on the floor. That's true. And even with like the hierarchy, like outside of just white male, I do think personal training is male dominated. We have people who mm. come in all the time and you know, our front desk would try to sell them like, oh, we also have female trainers, but they're like, oh, no, I want a guy yeah. right right off the bat mm. because that's what they think. They think the guy is going to be more knowledgeable. They think a guy is going to be more just getting them results quicker. But then you have other females who come and say, you know, well, actually, I don't even like being in the gym because I don't like being haggled I don't like being mm. stared at I have anxiety being in the gym around other men and even other females or just being in a gym and not knowing what they're doing yeah so sometimes having that connection with another female makes them feel more comfortable do you also come up against perception where um because I can imagine someone said well a man would know but it's interesting that a woman would automatically want to go with a man because I hear so much of women when I talk about like oh I prefer weight training because I'm not you know I don't know if the knees, I don't not big on cardio, you know, I will get on the machine, but I prefer weight training. And so many women, the first thing they say is, I don't want to get bulky like a man. And I'm usually, I say like, well, look at this woman online or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, look at her body. I'm like, you know how hard it was for her? You know how much weight she had lived over so long a time to look like that? Like sis, you could just get halfway there and quit. You don't got to go there so hard. Exactly. So I could imagine that's like kind of a... What do you call it? It's like I ironic or I don't know how the, yeah. the word yeah, to it's say like it. They, they want to build the muscle, but they don't want to be muscular. Yeah, mm -hmm. but also it's like I want a male trainer who looks that way. He's muscular, mm -hmm. but no, I don't want a woman. But the woman will probably get you closer to yeah. what you want. Yeah, we right? understand the softer look. Um, and I was like, I've had females who say like, oh my God, you're like, your arms are so big. You're... But I'm I'm small. Like I'm not I'm not walking around here, you know, cock diesel. Like I'm not bursting out of my t-shirts. Yeah. But I have muscle tone, and that's why I try to explain to females: you can have the toneness and still be soft. Yeah. You can. It's not an either or situation. You can have the best of both worlds. You can still be curvy, but have definition. And a lot of them think either you're going to have the one or you're going to have the other. Yeah. But I'm like, they'll look at Angela Bassett. Like she looks great, and I'm like. She lifts weights like heavy. Yeah. Um, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So I mean, even so it's the, almost like what they call it um, cognitive dissonance yeah. of like what you want, what you want to do to get it. And yeah, I think a lot of people just immediately associate the gym or lifting weights with being muscular and being like, oh, popping out like muscle bobs when bob. Like I don't know, like, <laughs> they think that they're gonna have these huge arms and lose all things that are feminine and that's not true I mean, it usually looks better much more feminine even like adding mm -hmm. curves like muscle a muscle is still a curve yeah wow. absolutely i mean so i i know personally that you don't just you know walk the walk you also talk the talk so can you talk a little bit about you know what you've you've been in correct me if i'm wrong bodybuilding competitions or what's it what's the correct term for it um the correct term is bodybuilding mm -hmm. it's just the organization that I choose to compete in, that uh, my gym that we compete in, mm -hmm. it's a natural organization. So okay. we don't use mm -hmm. supplements, we okay. don't use steroids or anything like that. And but we're still judged on our physique. We're still judged on toneness. Right. And when I decided to do it, it it was rough. I, <laughs> <laughs> It was, so it was rough. Walk us through your first experience with it. Like how, like, okay, what, what changes did you have to make, you know, being the, uh, the contestant? Uh, I had to seriously commit. I would say, and this is why I agree with a lot of my clients. It's, it's not about the working out. Um, now for some people it is, I'm not going to take right. that away from them, but committing to a diet, committing to knowing this is what you have for breakfast, lunch and dinner and a snack. Every day. What was that looking like? What, what's your, what's your breakfast uh, I'm on it right now. So I'm in, I'm in uh, prepar preparation for a competition in February next yeah. year currently. Um, just through my day-to-day, -day, my breakfast, four egg whites, one packet of oatmeal. My next meal, 
three ounces of white fish, so like cod, and uh, half a cup of brown rice. Yeah. Then the next meal is just a protein shake and literally 20 almonds. So I'm picking the almonds out of my bag, like making sure. And then it's like maybe three ounces of turkey and a green veggie. Yeah, I'm going to say, what a green, what a veggie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they, they're there. And then the last one is maybe like another protein source and some veggies. But then you have days where it's like you don't have any carbs. So it's like no rice, no oatmeal, mm -hmm. nothing to make you feel full. And those are the days where like you see the little ripples in your stomach because it's growling all hard. Oh, yeah. I, the diet, when I first did it, was like, what? You think that's like more mental? That's super mental Ooh. because it's easier to just go get food. And I don't cook. So. <laughs> That was a, a game changer for me. It's like, oh, well, I got to cook this food? Wait a yeah, second. Okay. This isn't any... I can't go get this. Some There's not a food like prep person for me to do this. And being... You know, I was committed, but like first getting into it, there were days where I cheated on my diet. Absolutely. Mm. I, late night cravings, I'm hungry. I, I'm going to go get a fry. Mm. And thinking in my head, like, wow, well, my coach would kill me if he knew this is what I was doing. <laughs> he only knew. Yeah, he only knew. There were days I was drinking. I had no business. There's no alcohol, so no wow. alcohol. And it's like, wow, he would murder me right now. But it's like you you got to develop the mindset. You have to tell yourself, like, if this is what we're going to do, we're going to do it. Yeah. And once you commit to it and you really start seeing, like, okay, there's a little method to this madness. I, now it's just, I enjoy competing. So mm -hmm. you've you've won quite a few times. I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to say because you let know. You talk, your, talk your mess. Talk, talk, <laughs> no, talk your that would have to be something. If I'm gonna be sitting there starving, it's mm. like I'm gonna oh, win, yeah. and I'm not gonna sabotage myself with this. Right. I, what's it for? That they're and it's funny. My coach made a point to say he was like. You have to, your mind has to be strong for this sport because you need to understand that 99% of it is losing. Mm. Only one person can win. Only mm. one person can come out on top. Mm. So going into my first show, I had no expectations. I didn't know what I was doing. I was freaking out because it's like, oh my God, I'm on stage in a bikini. Number one, my dad's going to be there. And this bikini is like way up in my <laughs> butt. And so, and I actually, I placed first yeah. in two of the categories okay. that I was in. First place, yeah, not second, first place. First place. <laughs> and I remember leaving backstage. I started crying. I didn't, that's like, what? It, it was a bizarre rush. Because the first time out, you just you wiped yeah, everybody was, out. Yeah, it's like, Dang. what? Superior me? <laughs> you see me so flexing? Like, no offense, the only black girl on stage to be like, oh, okay. Period. This what we doing? Black girl magic, first place? Yeah. That's yes. crazy. <laughs> so it was, it was insane. And... The, what was initially on plan was that show was in March of this year, um, February of this year. I was on track to do another show in February. The pandemic hit, and then actually had ended up needing surgery. Oh. And I remember breaking down like I'm never gonna be able to compete again. And my mom's like, "What are you? We're in a pandemic, girl. What are you talking <laughs> for? What are you competing against? Like, what do you? Yeah. What do you think is more important right now? She's like, "You can't go nowhere." <laughs> Um, and I was actually, I wasn't going to compete for the rest of this year. I was going to say, you know what, I'll just come back 2021. But I was like, you know what, I'm mm. bored. I need my hands in a little something. I got to always be doing something, touching on something. And I was like, let's, let's see how it goes. Um, so I've done three shows during the fall season. and During the pandemic. Yeah. So what do you, you guys get tested and you go to the facility and then they look at you? And... Wow. So it's great. So they recommend you, depending on the state. Yeah. So the state is a red state. They're like, look, we need to see a test. Um, you have to wear your mask on stage, which is, that was this time around, that was probably the toughest thing. It's already hot up there. You got, you're trying to sit there, keep everything tight. You got to smile. You got these hot lights on you. And you want me to wear a mask? Yeah, because you're oh my breathing. God. Yeah. And then you probably one might might be winning smile. Yeah, and it's like, well, do yeah. I smile under here? Can I smile <laughs> with my eyes? Can you see know. this? And yeah. it's like, no, you can't. So, all right, let me just drop this and try to control my breathing up here. And this season taught me a lot only because it was a short time that I had to pre uh, prepare. Like the first time around, it was maybe like seven weeks. Mm. And it like threw me back in. And then... Um, so this season, well, for the fall season, I had one show I placed fifth, another one I placed first again, 
And then this last one, I placed third. But for me, it was very humbling because I was like, why are you upset? You lost a cert- uh, injury. Yes. It's a pandemic still. Where, what are you upset for? What is the injury? Um, I it was like, uh, like, is it related to my like, training or? So initially, well, not initially, no. Over time, yes. I was in a car accident uh, back in July and it caused a chip um, mm. right in my shoulder. And, but it didn't bother me. You know, they told me that it was there, but I was like, okay, can I work out? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, yeah, you're fine. But over time, um, during the pandemic, I'm like, wow, this something doesn't feel right. Yeah. And then it got swollen. I'm asking my friend who's a doctor, like, can you look at this? Like, send them pictures. Like, do I need to go to the emergency room? And one day it was just, I couldn't move it. Mm-hmm. And I went and got an x-ray and I'm already freaking out. I'm like, I'm in an emergency room during COVID. And this yes. is like peak. This is March time. And yeah. I'm like, am I going to get COVID? Like, do I want to be in here? And the bone was literally one on top of the other. Oh. And the doctor's like, you need surgery. And they were like, what you can do is not get the surgery. It'll heal on its own, but you'll never be able to work out and perform yeah. like how you did before. I was like, well, when can we schedule it? That's, that's not an option. That's yeah. that's not so it. So it went from like just a chip in the bone to probably breaking yeah. and then overlapping or right. So my orthopedic doctor told me with the he asked me like what do you do? And I was like, Well I'm a trainer but I'm also an athlete and I, he was like, Well what do you mean? I was like, I'm a fitness competitor. Yeah. I was like, I'm training six days out of the week yeah. and he's like, Well that kind of pounding, that he was like, especially all of that it took a toll. Yeah. And he was like, you figure, he was like, if you were doing that, if the accident was back in July, you were doing that up until that whole entire time. So he was like, you more, find your bone like finally eight, nine eight. months. Yeah. 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 But that makes sense though, because it's like every other sport, which I never, I, I know is competitive, but I never really looked at it necessarily as a competitive sport. But it makes sense because it's like if I'm training for a football or ballet or anything else, I'm training to do something. Right. Where yours is like, I'm training for you to literally inspect my body. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm being judged. Yeah. Literally by how I look. People in the gym who did it who aren't now, I'm, like, I'm on the team, but it's like. You gonna get up there like a, a pony and do a song and dance? But that's that's what it is. You get up there, they tell you face front, turn to the back, do a walk, wow. and by that point, once you get off stage, they've already made their decision. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy because it's thinking about just um, I mean, there's so many, it's so many layers. It's like being a woman to ethnicity right. to. If we want to look at back and people might be like, oh, it's like a slave market. But at the same time, you're like, no, I'm competing against a lot of white people. I am. Yeah. So I know even though the eugenics is over, there's some people who would say, yeah, who's better? Is the black girl and then you come out and they're just like, they're really better. <laughs> <laughs> I was at that, my first show. I had a girl, um, a white girl, daggers at me the entire time. The mm. entire and you're like, there's other women up here. Why are you just exactly. focused on me? And you know, I I did a I talked about this on just my Instagram because I've learned going through it that there is a community within what I do. Mm. You know, there are, I've gained and reached and connected with so many other competitors in the same field as me. We're all like, oh, what show are you doing next? We hope to see you. But this girl set the tone. She. Mm. Daggers did not speak to anybody. Wow. Was like stayed in her own, and I came to find out that she was used to placing first. Mm. Uh. That's what she was used to, and she got second to me. And I never forget that she huffed and puffed after awards, and a lined it right out of the the dressing room. So with black women being such a small segment, like what? Okay. If we look at the fitness community, right, and it's male dominated, how many, if we look at percentage wise, like out of 100%, how many, as far as the fitness trainers and professionals, would you consider, like, would you think would be women? I would say, even from the following that I do on Instagram, 20 to 30. Mm. And, then, and I think they're mostly based in, like, the down south area. Wow. Yeah. So then, if we break, and we're just talking about women all together, right? Yeah. Okay. So, and I'm, I'm probably thinking you're right, but yeah, down south and probably Cali, because we know California's yeah, Cali, been so far ahead yeah. in the fitness game forever, right? 
Okay, so out of the women trainers, if a hundred percent of women trainers, how many do you think are like black black women? Five to ten percent. Mm. Wow, out of that thirty percent. Yeah. So wow, women being thirty percent and then black women being only five percent of that thirty percent. Wow. Why do we why do we feel like it's not as many black women in fitness as fitness professionals? I think there's been a stigma built around fitness and working out that it's something only men can excel at. Mm. Or even training that it's something a man can only change a body. And I think females have to, and communities, not even the black community, just human beings in general need to break out of that stigma. A man is not the end all be all, no shade to men out there, but a female can get you (laughs) just as right as a man can. And a black female can get you just as right as a man can as well. Um, But I think too, because women feel that way, they feel like they can't do it as well as a man can. You see women who do consider themselves, who, who are in the fitness industry, they're more so of a um, nutritionist mm. or yoga. They tend to go more of the softer side. But oh. when we're talking about gritty, weight training, lifting weights, that's when you start to see that gap get really small. Now, that's crazy. We're seeing that amongst a lot of industries. Because yeah. even in film, absolutely, women tend to certain specific things, hair, makeup, wardrobe, um, set decoration and art direction, but not as many as in gaffing right. and like Even cinematography directing, yeah. and directing, right? So that's crazy. So because it's, it's interesting, I guess it's like this. I guess still fitness, although we know it's for everybody, right? Do we still see like a class separation too? Because I feel like even when we talk about social economic lines, more of the people who I guess they were just working so hard trying to get a make a living. It like fit working out with seen as like a luxury or something. Oh, absolutely. I there are people who come through our doors all the time and you know, they hear the price and they're like, I don't know, that's expensive. But at the same time, it's like I want you to go home and tally up how much you spent on fast food this month. And mm. if coming in here is expensive, I want you to tally up how much money you spend on alcohol going out and partying and spend on these VIP and brunches every month. Yeah. And it's all about what, if, what do you really want to commit to? Mm. You want to go to brunch every Sunday and be spending $60? Let's be, let's be real. Yeah. You got to get the bottom of this. <laughs> right. You got to have your steak and eggs. You got to have your steak and eggs. So you're spending $60, $70 every Sunday. And I'm just asking you to spend $200, $300. But it's just, I think for people, when you hear the amount all in one lump sum, it's like, oh, no. But no, go, I challenge some people like go check your bank statements and mm-hmm. i want to see who's really more expensive are you more expensive to yourself or am i more expensive to you mm. Mm. that makes sense that's a solid challenge all right real quick um i know we have to we're getting to the end of our little segment here yeah but uh one of the things that you know we like to do is like to put you on the spot and get to know more about <laughs> fitbrit so first yeah. and foremost um so we like to always lead with this question um what do you feel like would be the album to describe where you're at in your life right now? Um, what's the most ratchet album that's out right now? Uh, <laughs> 2020 is just so crazy. It's like, there are no rules. Mm-hmm. Um, Probably a future album. Or a Who City Girl album. Yeah, either a future or a City Girl vibe. A future actually just released an album with Lil Uzi Vert, and yeah. I have that on repeat right now, so okay. I would say they're their collab album. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, okay, so yeah, back to because that question is always like, <laughs> I always like kind of disagree that about like we need to prep people because that is like it's so far reaching, right? Yeah. But what what would make you consider not even what would make you consider? How do you consider yourself a disruptor mm-hmm. in your industry? Um or I, in, in the culture. I not in your industry, yeah. So yeah. Like the culture of your industry or just culture overall. Now that I've had to come out of my own shell, I'm speaking up for what I want. If Mm. I don't like something, I'm letting anybody know. And I feel like America and then within the black community, they're not used to a female doing that. Even I talk to my client, you're going to do what I say. This is like, this is my time. This is my job. This is my profession. You're tired. Oh, so sorry. Let, let's finish this out. Wow. Somebody comes to me. I don't like your pricing. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, here's somebody else that I feel like yeah. can suit you. I'm not going to, I'm not in the business of trying to convince anybody. I know my worth. I know I have the education and I know I can do it. So either you're going to come and join the team or you're not. 
Fit Brit said, look, pay the price <laughs> it is what it and is. makes you my customer. <laughs> if you don't like this price, you're not my customer. I'm That's sorry. Nice. Everybody don't Black do Louis white. Vuitton. Everybody don't get Hermes. <laughs> you want Fit Brit, you're getting the best. You're getting the best. <laughs> All right, real quick before we like, give you your, 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 your time and give you a shout out and where people can follow you. So first and foremost, would you do chest day or leg day? Chest day. Chest day, okay. Assault bike or, oh no, assault bike or regular bike or treadmill? The treadmill. Okay. I got bad knees. <laughs> <laughs> or ski trip or beach day? I don't like getting dark. And I don't like the cold. I'm gonna say the beach. You gonna say the beach? Yeah. Okay. Get some, okay. some shade. Okay. Okay. Those are the top top three. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna say because I know people might be on a in a bed. You say I don't like getting darker. Okay. It's because of makeup, sis. <laughs> it's about, some people might think it's being colorless, but she yeah, like, like you know, I'm not nothing. I got eczema, so you know I burn easily. You know, I have a lot of skin to protect. I got real sensitive skin, but then the cold too be messing with me a little bit. So. Mm. Take the beast day. Yeah. So go ahead, go ahead and how shout out. People, no, yeah, how can people find you? Because you yeah. have merch. Oh, you have absolutely. a lot of great things. Let's talk about it. So Instagram right now, nonstop underscore Fitbrit is my Instagram. And then the merch, these are in, these are just on restock. 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 But I made the decision. I'm in the process of creating my website. The website okay. is dropping 2021. The first week of January is my goal. Going forward, that will be where all the merch will be released. And what about people who want to sign up for maybe virtual classes? Oh, absolutely. Um, so, again, my Instagram, nonstop underscore FitBrit, but also the email address is nsffitbrit at gmail.com. In-person training, virtual training, and online training. Um, and there is a difference, online and virtual. Virtual, we're like face-to-face, -face, whether it's Zoom or FaceTime. Yeah. Online, I sit down, I make a regimen, and I just send it to you, and I just I check on you here and there. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Well, you heard it, Fit Brit. Make sure you sign up for the class. Check out what she's got to offer. Um, and with that, you have it. Disruptors in the Culture, Joshua Meekins, Amira Smith, and... Fit Brit, thank love you for it. having me. Love it. We love having you. Thank, thank you so you much for, for you know showing up and being you. Thank so you. Uh, with that, we are out. Hey, this is Amira Smith, co-host of the Disruptors in the Culture podcast. You could be anywhere in the world right now on any video in the world, but you're here watching us. Thank you. Like, subscribe, and share. Check out our next episode. Tell us what you think in the comments.